strong because it was very difficult for other people's culture to have any influence at all on each other. Indeed, the importance of the emergence of globalization cannot be downplayed, but its negative effect on cultural preservation and development have been greatly impacted. Globalization has made today's world very complex and challenging to deal with because what could have taken several years to reach others can now reach them in minutes or seconds. In those days, what used to be the problem of other locality of people is now a global problem, which requires a multi-facet approach to deal with them. Social, cultural environment. The fact is that man lives in particular geographical conditions that he has for his society a definite pattern of economic activities, yet social man is as much the product of his social culture, social cultural environment as he is of physical surroundings and economic conditions. Furthermore, the social environment has been equated with his culture, and writers like Graham have termed it as his social heritage. According to Megva, man lives under a total environment, a concept of his ecology that comprehends his total existence. And I'm giving you this background because the topic is saying to rediscover the culture in you. Before you can rediscover the culture, you must first appreciate what that culture is. And you must be interested and cherish it. Other than that, it will be of no use striving yourself to rediscover. As he lives in the plains or in the hills, and as he engages in agriculture or industrial activities, he lives a life that has been shaped by his social heritage. He is born under it, and in his family, he learns first to get conditions, conditions to customs and practices, beliefs, values, norms that are of a society and the community. However, the social cultural environment presents to every individual the problem of adjustment. The primitive man then did not find a variety of conditions before him to which he was required to adjust himself. But a modern man has a very complex social cultural setup today before him, which makes greater demand for adjustment very challenging. An anthropologist, Hauser Kid, in his research many years ago, discussed extensively the cultural dimensions which were power, distance, uncertainty, avoidance, collectivism, individualism, masculine and femininity, long or short-term view, indulgence or restraint. He described Africans as collectivism, and I'm proud to belong to a clan or a group who really care for each other. Because that's what the Bible says. We are living for each other. And until we do that collectively, we are not living the purpose of which God created us. And therefore, if we are considered as uh, collectivism, it is interesting for us to embrace it and pursue the importance of that collectivism. He described the Americans and the Europeans as individualistic. When you grow and you are 18 years, you are required to move from your home and go and hire your own place and live. Whatever happened to you thereof is your own issue. But when you come to the African setup, it is collectivism. A child belongs to the family, a child belongs to the community, and a child belongs to the entire country. And now I will say the child becomes the country.
Africans therefore see common development goals, which cherish collective acceptance and responsibilities of almost everything we do. The family of our community is the very important organization we adore and cherish to belong to. How said further discuss the power distance dimension and in relationship to Africans, power and authority were concentrated with the leadership. This is what has largely influenced the respect and stability of traditional leadership over several years. The African society or community had well-established structures that was sufficient and potent enough to deal with what society considers evil or bad. The famous Adikra symbol, which is engraved in this one, was created by my uncle, and it is all over the world as a philosophical symbols, which were used for educative purposes to bring peace and to also train our children so that they grew up in a manner that would be fit what we want them to be, because the future is the case that we bring out. Permit me to state this Kenyan proverb. He said, we have not inherited the land from our ancestors, but rather we have borrowed it from the future generation. And if you borrow something, you pay and pay with interest. But looking at what we are doing now, it seems we will be a bad debt. If we don't change. After carefully reviewed and appreciate the democratic systems within the African cultural systems, I am fully convinced that what is called democracy today were the systems of governance our ancestors were practicing. And I'll give you an example. If you come to my palace, I am the king. I have 51 divisional chiefs under me. The Akemades, another 51. Another 38 of uh, sub chiefs. And when we sit in state, I consider myself as the speaker of the house. Everyone speaks and I rule. And this was done before my, my throne, prepared 1400, before the coming of the white. They came around, they went back, and they have brought it back to us. And they are saying, we call it democracy. <laughs> Unfortunately, when they brought it back, and they said they call it democracy, they are telling us that chiefs are no more important in the judicial system. And therefore, we have to get other people who will be the judges. Our judicial system then was fair and well established to deal with disputes and punish wrongdoers when brought before the traditional court systems. Indeed, I can confidently say that what we see today is a repackage of what justice, our justice systems used to be long before the colonial masses came. Furthermore, respect for the elderly, leadership of a household, family systems, and even community or kingdom leadership, kingdom leadership system were brilliantly effective to deal with corrupt individuals, whether they were rich, poor, or influential. Today, the value systems have broken down. Everyone and everyone is complaining, but there is no solution on site. Due to the polarization of the entire society by the repackaged system called democracy. No more respect for the other people as long as they do not belong to our political parties or groups, religious groups, and social class who can make a photocopy and still get original. It is time Africans rethink and redevelop a culture which has been wounded badly due to our desire to look like something that does not exist. Today in Ghana, for instance, a young boy can call on a radio station and insult the president. They are doing all manner of leadership, including the church, who are representative of God. 
and now they are even trying to bring it to us. This repackaged democracy has emboldened the wicked in society who have found safe habits in the political system and using it to their advantage at the expense of the larger community, which hitherto was the rulers. This they call freedom of speech and human rights. What right can someone have that teaches him or her to defy the order and the principles of the Bible and the God that who created this world? Now we are being forced to even say that same-sex marriage is also another desire of a group of people and we should allow them. <laughs> Professor Lumumba has said that what we call, what we describe election today in Africa is not just that, but an ethnic census to determine which of the ethnic group has the power for the next four years or whatever the term may be. We can get a political leader or a politician or a civil servant stealing our money and because he 